Hey there! If you've been watching our channel long enough, you realize our motto is hike, camp, go. But what does the go mean? Sometimes it's biking, sometimes it's finding cool places off the beaten path, but a lot of times it's kayaking. Kayaking is one of our favorite activities, and despite the fact that we have this van, we wanted to find a way to be able to go kayaking, especially sometimes off those beaten path places. Unfortunately, we're not really set up to carry full hard-sided kayaks. Uh, the roof doesn't really work, it's too tall, and it's not really designed for that. Uh, we know people who have tried to put racks on the back of the van, but those didn't seem to go really well, and that's where we carry our bikes. So we did the next best thing. We found an inflatable kayak. After a lot of research and recommendations from friends, we settled on a Sea Eagle, uh, we specifically the Sea Eagle 330 model. What's really nice is it folds pretty compactly to fit in our van, uh, as well as all of the accessories. So today we're going to show you where we store it, all the accessories that come with it, and how we put it together so that we're ready to take it out for adventures. The kayak itself is only 26 pounds. It's 11 feet long and just shy of three feet wide. It's rated to hold up to 500 pounds. Another nice feature is that the kayak comes in this really nice carry bag. Um, it's got vinyl on the inside. It's pretty sturdy on the outside. And it's got this really nice shoulder strap, so you have a kayak to go. This is really nice because sometimes you have a ways to go from, say, your trunk to where you want to actually put the kayak in. For instance, recently at Harrison Lake State Park, where we stayed in Ohio, where we were camping in the campground was quite a distance across the lake from where we wanted to put in at the beach. So we just grabbed the kayak in its case, grabbed all our accessories, and hiked around the lake and set everything up there, and that was super handy. Here in front of me is our kayak and all of its accessories. We were able to buy all of this as one big kit. Um, everything but the life jackets, those are separate. Um, but everything else you see here in front of me, we bought as a package. It starts with the kayak itself, which is folded up right now in its lovely carrying case. And it is a Sea Eagle 330. It's one of the smaller ones that they make. These are the two seats that go with it. Now, we chose to upgrade our seats to sort of the premium ones, and, and we're really glad we did. We can talk about those more later. Um, but normally it comes with two regular seats. And then it comes with these collapsible paddles, which is really nice because they store really easily once they're all folded up. And then finally, probably the most important part here is the foot pump so that we can air it up. And since it requires no electricity, it doesn't matter where we are, uh, we can pump up both the kayak and the seats. As I said, we decided to upgrade to the premium seats. The original ones that it comes with, or the standard ones, are more of just a, a normal, thin, vinyl inflatable. Whereas these are a heavy-duty canvas material um, with two chambers. The, the seat and the back are separate. Um, they're pretty thick and sturdy, giving you a lot of support when you're out on the water. Uh, and as well as they have these cute little pockets on the back for some storage space. Storage space in a Class B RV is limited, and it's great that the Sea Eagle deflates and that all of its components break apart into smaller pieces, but you still have to have somewhere to put those pieces. We have tried many different setups with all of the components to see what might work better, because honestly, we don't use the kayak often enough to have everything right out in front all the time. So we try to tuck it away where it's out of the way as much as possible, but easily accessible enough that if we decide we want to get the kayak out, we can get to it. Right now, inside the van, we have the life vests and the seats once they're deflated. Life vests are separated. We have one in the back of the storage cabinet here that where my clothes normally go. It's in the back of this. And then we have another one that's down on the floor in front of the couch. Neither spot is ideal, but we're making it work. The one in the back of the storage cabinet takes away from my clothing space. So I pack a little bit less, which is fine. I'm a minimalist. The uh, one on the floor is under the couch enough that when we go to set the bed up at night, it can move and it doesn't hit the vest, so I don't have to move that. We'll see how that continues, and who knows, all of this setup could change by tomorrow when I decide there's some new great way to move things around and drive Jessie crazy because she'll go to reach for something and it's not there anymore. <laughs> In our road trek, the 190 Popular, it's based on the Chevy chassis. We have what's known as the third seat option. So in addition to the passenger and driver seat up front, you have a third seat here in the middle of the van that you can use for passengers. And it also has storage underneath. We've actually removed the rear of the seat and we use it uh, for hanging coats and that kind of thing back here. But the storage unit underneath the seat is really, really helpful. And this opens up, it 
has a ton of space for a lot of miscellaneous things in it, including right now I have both of the seats from the Sea Eagle deflated and stuffed down into this compartment. The back of the van under the couch is where we have most of the components from the Sea Eagle. Again, I've set this up differently under here over time. Um, at one time I had the kayak paddles in the basement storage unit that we have outside. Things moved around a lot, but this is how we have it set up right now. For those of you not familiar with the way this road trek works, we have the electric couch. So it's couch during the day and then we hit the button and it folds down and becomes a bed at night. The tricky part about that is because it moves, you have to make sure that things stay low underneath them so they don't get caught. So back here we have the tubes for the paddles after they come apart. I don't know what the official kayaking term for that is, but it's the part you hold on to. And it may look strange because I have them sort of strapped up here to this one back bar, but it actually works really well. It keeps things out of the way so that if I'm moving other things in and out, those can just stay in place. We also have back here the actual ends of the paddles themselves. We have the kayak folded down back here under half of the couch. And then this little bag here is what we use to keep the air pump and other miscellaneous parts that go with it that are small and we just want to be able to move them around easy and store them. On both the seats and on the kayak, we have these special, I guess I don't know if they're one-way or two-way valves, but they're really cool. So you put the main one in to lock it. And then you open the top one. And so when your air goes in here to inflate it, and then when you're all done, and you want to deflate it, you just open it up and squish it down and everything pops out. So we found those really handy. And like I said, it works both on the seats and on the kayak as well. When you think about an inflatable kayak, many people think of just your standard pool type material. But with the Sea Eagle, you're getting um, a heavy duty poly something or other material. It says on the website, it's, it's really fancy, uh, but it's a really strong heavy duty material that can actually be used in class three whitewater rapids. Uh, so you know you're getting a really good product. Uh, but because of that, you have to be careful when you're inflating it to not over actually or under inflate it. And so it comes with this fancy inflation monitor. Yes, it's this little piece of plastic, but don't let it fool you. It's actually very cool. Uh, so the way it works is as you're pumping it up, you hold it against uh, the side here and you know you're right when all of the lines line up. Uh, when it starts, the numbers are all over the place, uh, but you just kind of hold it on here and it, and it really works well. So um, definitely don't uh, underrate this thing. <laughs> Well, you can get a powered unit to inflate the kayak with. We stuck with the original package, which is simply this bellows that they've put together. And on its website, Sea Eagle says you should be able to pump up the kayak, the 330 anyway, the small one, in about six minutes. And we timed it today. We've never timed it before. It was right around six minutes. So I guess they're right when it comes to that. But this is really just a really simple bellows system. What I like about it, because we're in the Class B RV, is when you're done with it, it simply folds down. You can clip it together so it doesn't unfold. This wraps around, you put it in the bag, it's very flat. It's pretty much as compact as you're gonna get it and it is gonna fit into smaller spaces and that pretty much defines our life, smaller spaces. The 330 is the smallest one that they make and it shows it's designed for an adult, an adult and a child or two small adults, which is essentially what we are. Uh, or I can be considered a child most of the time size-wise. So I get the front seat where it's a little more cramped. Unlike a traditional hard kayak where you usually have like foot rests for your feet up front, uh, because of the way this is angled and the inflatable, there aren't those foot rests. So I usually just find myself with my feet kind of tucked up under here, bracing myself um, or with my feet up here. I can even put them up here and just relax on the river. Um, 
But I do find that because I'm the smaller one, I do kind of end up squished up here in the front. But it works just fine, and it, we make it work because uh, this is the kind of thing that we want to enjoy. So this is my perch in the rear of the kayak, where a lot of times I'm the one kayaking and paddling because Jessie's got her feet up and she's relaxing, as she talked about, but that's okay. Uh, to give you some context, Jessie's about 4'11", I'm about 5'7", so neither of us are very large. So the smaller kayak does work for us. If you are taller than we are, or you want to have two, what would you consider full-size adults, you're probably going to want to move up to the 370, which is bigger. But keep in mind, it's a little heavier. It is a little longer and it doesn't fold down quite as small as the 330. So this works for us and we make it work because it does fit into the van so well. A lot of the time when I'm paddling, my knees are bent. And so that can get a little bit tiring on a long trip, but it's not too bad. I can stretch out a little bit. Once Jessie's in her seat, I'll actually put my feet under her seat and use that as the brace. And that helps me when I'm paddling. And I think it keeps her seat in place as well while she's doing her paddling. We make it work. And that's what you need to do is figure out what works and go to it. So keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there. But back here, I have the, what's it called? The paddles? That's not the, well, yeah, it's part of the paddles. It's the oh. sticks for the paddles. <laughs> the two, the paddle the, tube? The tubes? I don't know. Paddles. It's, okay. I've never thought or about it. Whatever anything. official kayaking term that is. Okay. 